Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now the iPhone 11 Pro Max has been doing very well on the Speedtest GX uh, test runs, particularly against Android devices. However, some people have been commenting, yes, it's all very well running the uh, iPhone when you've just kind of rebooted it when it's cold, but as soon as it starts to get warm, that performance will drop. And I thought, well, that's an interesting idea. Is there any truth behind it? So I've put it to the test. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so the background to this is the fact that any processor, when it starts to get warm, it needs to be cooled. Now inside, for example, a desktop PC, you'll have big fans and a big heat sink on it, and it has active cooling, which is able to keep the processor at a optimum temperature. However, in things like smartphones and tablets, and even in some uh, laptops, the cooling options are much more limited, and particularly in, I in smartphones, it's very passive, which means it's just through heat dissipation through the chassis and out into the air. So of course, when the processor gets too warm and it can't get rid of the heat, it has to drop down the clock frequencies, maybe even alter the voltages, so that there's not so much heat being produced until a time when the heat has gone down and then the performance can be ramped up. And this is true of any processor, whether it's Android, iOS, whether it's on a laptop, whether it's an Intel, ARM base, whatever, it is kind of a laws of physics kind of thing. Now the argument is, is that while all processors have to kind of do this thing, the uh, iPhone is particularly bad at it. So what I did was this, I ran Speedtest G, got a test result, and we know that from other videos, that's around the one minute 15.5 mark. And then I ran a special version of the Unity test, that flyover test, for 30 minutes to see, to give it some kind of heat and to build up the heat inside of it. Now I measured the heat as we were going along. Before the device is used, it was at 24 degrees. Having run the first test run of Speedtest G, it went up to 30 degrees, and then having run it for half an hour using the Unity test, it then goes up to 44 degrees. And then having run for that half an hour, having been heated up to 44 degrees, I then ran Speedtest GX again to see what the result was like. So let's compare a cold iPhone against a warm iPhone and see if there's any performance difference. So we have the cooler iPhone 11 Pro Max with the A13 running cool now on the left hand side, whereas we have the much warmer, hotter iPhone 11 Pro Max with a warmer A13 on the right hand side. And so already we can see a bit of a lead being built up there by the colder A13 processor. It's now into the zip test while the hotter one is only now getting into the zip test. So a bit of a lead they're already building up. Will this lead increase as we get our way through the test? It's now into the 16 thread test. Now remember this is a hexacore processor, six processors, two big cores and four little cores. And I must say that looking at that now, the, the one on the right hand side is running that test a little bit slower. So maybe some of those bigger cores are not quick kicking in as much as they used to. Maybe they're not even being used at all. But that is quite slow as already the colder A13 is now into the infinite scrolling list as the warmer iPhone 11 Pro Max is into the blur test. Let's see what the frame rate is on there. Let 29, 30 frames a second on the smoke particle test as the colder A13 is now into Unity test. Clearly a big lead now forming over the warmer A13, which is now into that uh, smoke test. 29 frames a second, we can hit 30, no. So a bit slower there also through that. There you go, one minute 15.5 for the cold A13, while the warmer A13 is now still in its uh, Unity test. So clearly the clock is ticking away here. There's gonna be quite a lead now over this. What we're gonna get, there we go, one minute 29.0. Okay, let's break down the scores and see where the differences are. So clearly the colder iPhone 11 Pro Max won with a time of one minute 15.5, and then 13.5 seconds later, which is a 17% increase in time, the iPhone 11 Pro Max that was running hot came into the final part of the test. So let's look at the CPU GPU. Here we go, CPU 40.5 for the cold one. 51 on the nose for the hot one. So quite a big difference there between the two 10.5 seconds. So a lot of that 13.5 seconds 
seems to be in that CPU uh, difference there. When we get to mixed CPU, GPU, the CPU is still affecting things. We see here 20.5 versus 23.5. And interestingly, when you get to the GPU, both exactly the same, 14.5 versus 14.5. So I think we can conclude from that that it is the CPU that is certainly taking the brunt of that throttling effect when the iPhone 11 Pro Max is running hot. So clearly we can see that when the iPhone 11 Pro Max gets warm, the performance does drop off. In fact, it dropped off by over 15%, maybe even 17%. So then I got myself thinking, is this just the tip of the iceberg? Is this the end of it? Is it, is it a nice graph? What happened? So I did the testing again with running SpeedTestG at the beginning, then ran Unity tests for 10 minutes. So it's 10 minutes of intensive 3D work then ran speed test again, then another 10 minutes, and then another 10 minutes, and I come up with this graph. So as we can see here along the bottom, the blue line is the temperature of the device, and the top line is how long it takes to run speed test GX 2.0. So the first test run, after 30 degrees at the end of the test run, one minute 15.5. After 10 minutes of running uh, the Unity test, the temperature went up to 39 degrees, but actually the device was still able to repeat the same performance, one minute 15.5. However, once the temperature got up to 44 degrees, that's where we see that time of one minute 29, which I just showed you in the previous video. Another 10 minutes again, and the temperature still stayed at 44 degrees, which meant that it was also one minute 29 again. Again, another 10 minutes and the temperature still stayed at 44 and 1 minute 29. So at this point, I was starting to feel that 44 degrees, 1 minute 29 was kind of the constant uh, of what you're going to get when your iPhone is running hot. But I thought, well, I'll run it for another 10 minutes and see what happens. And then a bit of a shock result for this last one, still at 44 degrees. So I was expecting the same test time, but actually this last time round, this is after 50 minutes of intensive work, the actual time was 1 minute 38. So that was another nine seconds added onto the time. In fact, 28% longer than when the device is running cold. So what can we say here? Well, clearly the performance of the iPhone does throttle and does decrease as the device gets warmer. In fact, you could say that's quite a dramatic decrease in performance once the device gets hot. Now, of course, you're gonna have to use your iPhone for 20 to 30 minutes of intensive 3D gaming before you see that throttling effect start to kick in. But once it does, it seems to stay there and you are losing 15, 17% of your performance due to the heat. However, it's also worth mentioning that even with this uh, throttling that's going on, these times of one minute 29 is actually better still than many of the Android devices that are running from cold. However, when I did hit that one minute 38, that really was a bad time even compared to the Android devices, but that was after 50 minutes of using the device with intensive 3D gaming. So throttling, absolutely there is. Bad throttling, most certainly you could say that. Will you see it after two or three minutes? No, 20, 30 minutes, then it starts to become a problem. And I'm sure there's a difference between the iPhone 11, the iPhone 11 Pro and the iPhone 11 Pro Max just because of the size of the chassis and the amount of heat that can dissipate passively through the chassis. So this is just for the iPhone Pro Max. Okay, my name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Please share this video on social media. Tell your friends about it. Also, please do hit that bell notification icon. Don't forget there is a dedicated Speed Test G channel where I'm testing phones one against the other every single day of the week. And I suppose that's about it. I'll see you in the next one.